I can't believe it's been three years. Sometimes it seems like just yesterday, and other times it seems like a lifetime ago. Beth, Amy, Megan, Joe. My sisters and I were named after the book Little Women by Louise May Alcott. Now we aren't named in the order of the book. Instead, more like the order of my mom's favorite names. Sorry, Joe. Amy was my little sister, born two years after me. She was the active one, born with a field hockey stick in one hand and a basketball in the other. She was out saving lives as a safety patrol officer and winning state championships, while I was home reading a book, hiding candy bar wrappers under my bed. It came as no surprise when Amy became a whistleblowing physical education teacher and coach of many sports. On our yearly family vacations, Amy was always the first to see the dolphins at the beach, a rainbow, or point out a beautiful sunset. At first, we started noticing little things, leaving a purse behind in the store, losing car keys and glasses, getting lost after a track meet. Then we started noticing bigger things, forgetting how to hold a field hockey stick, sign a check, getting lost from the neighborhood grocery, a vague look when asked a question. Even after weeks of medical tests and second opinions, nothing prepared us for the shock of the final outcome. At 48, my little sister Amy was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. This can't be right. I was the fat, lazy one. Amy was healthy and in shape. I mean, how could anyone that young have such an old person disease? Besides, in the book, Beth was the sister to die first. Amy started wearing a medication patch to slow down the Alzheimer's. And I started pretending like it wasn't happening. Looking back, I don't know if it was cowardice or coping that made me unwilling to believe Amy was now a statistic. It was easier not to tell people rather than handle their questions and disbelief, which were the same as my own. Even in the family, none of us would ever say the A word. For two years, I watched my brother-in-law take care of my sister. Meg, Joe, and I tried to pitch in when we could with little things, like taking her to the hairdresser to get her hair done and nails trimmed, shopping for easy to put on new stretchy clothes. But Bob and her girls, they didn't get the luxury of denial or disbelief, carrying the load as long as they possibly could. Amy celebrated her 50th birthday in the Wood Glen Alzheimer's community in Dayton, Ohio. It seems strange to say that it was there that I have my favorite memory of her. She pointed to the window and seemed really excited. I looked and there it was, the most beautiful sunset I had ever seen. It was glorious and it was just like the old Amy. She held my hand and we prayed together, squeezing hard when I said amen. And I found peace. Amy found her peace August 31st, 2011, almost three years ago. The youngest in the Dayton area hospice to battle such a treacherous enemy. The irony of Alzheimer's is that the youngest diagnosed progress the fastest and die the quickest. Every 67 seconds, someone in the United States is diagnosed with Alzheimer's. But when it's your someone, only one second matters. I hate this disease. I mean, I really hate it. The loss of dignity is brutal. But at the same time, I've never been prouder of my sister or my family. Amy now has a granddaughter, which I get to love on and tell about her amazing grandma. Amy's other daughter's getting married soon. They planted a tree to give shade for future athletes at the school where she coached. Life goes on and we celebrate. I've never done the local Alzheimer's walk before. I had a million excuses not to. And I know what Amy would say to that. Put your big girl panties on and deal with it. 
Put one foot in front of the other and walk. Get out there and help. Raise money for a cure. Walk for the others. So I'll walk. I'll walk with my remaining little women sisters, and I'll walk with the other families and friends, and I'll walk for Amy. <laughs>